Yesterday we learned about completing the square, a method that we can use for factoring quadratics that, or for solving a quadratic equation that doesn't necessarily factor very nicely. Today we're going to, today we're going to do a few more examples of that together and I'm going to give you Oh, and I'm going to give you a guided worksheet. It's just a worksheet, but with a nice, very, with, with a detailed guide you can follow to solve these problems. So, so we're going to start by first, you need to get your hands on this worksheet. So I need everybody to log into Canvas. and get the most recent assignment. I'm going to share screens with you, so. Hmm. Share screen. Here we go. Okay. So, you should see this. When you log into Canvas, you should see the home screen. And I need you to go to Modules. I'm going to turn off my camera. This is not necessary. OK. And go all the way to the bottom. To the one called Guided Worksheet Completing the Square. and grab this PDF. You can open it or save it. I'm going to open it. There we go. And this is your, oh, and is that? Okay, so can all y'all see the work see the worksheet? Yep. Great. Okay, so be sure to grab it yourself because be sure to grab it yourself because uh these problems here are your are a homework assignment. All right. So yesterday I wasn't really satisfied with my completing the squares lesson yesterday. It was a bit of a hot mess. So so uh, so I looked around for a worksheet with this nice guided practice to show you an easy step-by-step -step that you can use, use for solving one of these problems. So what we're going to do today, ooh, a bunch of people showed up. Let's see. So what we're going to do today is in class, we're going to do a first few of these, of these together, following the guide. And then we're going to, and then I'm going to send you, and then I'm going to have you guys do the rest on your own. Sound good? Yep. All right. So for those, uh, some of you just joined, go to uh, Canvas modules and go way down to the bottom to the most recent worksheet and download this worksheet because we're going to do a few do problems from here. Okay. So. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing.
Well, yeah, yeah, I better stop sharing. Oh, you know what I should do really quick? Hold up. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to print out a copy of this worksheet so that, that way uh, you don't need to choose between looking at the worksheet and looking at the camera. I'll be right back. I'm not sure why I said I'll be right back. I'm, I'm wearing a headset. I, I just need to move across the room and I take you with me. Okay. So, so everybody should have this worksheet on their screen. But I also have it here in the camera to make it easier for me to refer to it. Okay. So here we have a nice guide for completing the square. Showing it step by step. Now this one works a little bit differently from the way we did it in class yesterday, but they're functionally the same and in the same. Uh, there's, you know, everybody kind of has a preferred technique, though the general steps are the same. So what they did is they took the constants and gathered them all on the right side. They found a half of B, which is four, squared it, and added that to both sides. That's the same as adding it and subtracting it. Like if I subtract 16, I would cancel out both of them sort of thing. You're allowed to do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. And this, is now the perfect square trinomial, x plus 4 times x plus 4. You factor it, take the square root of both sides, isolate the x. So let's go ahead and do number 1 together. So for number one, we have a squared plus 2a minus 3 equals 0. So first of all, can I factor this? Well, negative 3 can be split into 1 and negative 3, or it can be split into 1 and negative 3, or negative 1 and 3. Looks like this one actually can be factored normally. This one actually can be factored normally. We can split it into x minus 1, x plus 3, because these two both add up to give us 2. But let's go ahead and complete the square with it anyway, just in the name of getting, some pr of getting practice. So our first step of following this sheet is to add c, the constant, to both sides, or to both sides so that we have it on the right side. So I'm going to add 3. These cancel. And now I have a squared plus 2a equals 3. Now, one thing, I'll, one thing I'll note is that this is using a's instead of x's, but that's no reason to panic. The shape of the variable, the shape of the little squiggle of ink that is our variable really is not important. It's the numbers that are important. Okay, so now our second step 
is to find half of B and add the square of that number to both sides of the equation. Well, B is two. So half of B, well, what's half of two? One is half of two. And one squared is one. So I'm going to add one to both sides. A squared plus 2A plus 1 equals 3 plus 1. So I took this and I added 1 to both sides. And I'm allowed to do that because, well, I'm allowed to do whatever I want to both sides of an equation. You can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides, as long as you keep it balanced. Okay, now this left side, when, when, once you follow these steps, this left side is always a perfect square trinomial, by which I mean it can always be written Let's see, oh, the right side, uh, 3 plus 1, that's 4. Once you're done, the, right, the left side can always be written as x plus that number you got earlier. Or x plus 1 half b. So, which in this case, that's 1. And you can double check this. by foiling. A times A is A squared plus A plus A plus 1. That is totally unreadable. There we go. A plus A is A squared. So. As you can see, turning this into this was a valid factoring. Anyway, anything times itself is that thing squared. Now, we follow our next step, which is to find the square root of both sides. The square root of a plus 1 squared is a plus 1. Well, whatever I do to one side, I also need to do to the other. Square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. And now we need a Solve for x. Isolate x. And so a is 1 plus or minus 2. Now, at this point, the guided worksheet is done. It's happy. But we can go a little bit further. What is 1 plus 2? Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. And what is 1 minus 2? 1 minus 2 is negative 1. All right. So did that help demystify this process a little bit? Give you a nice series of steps you can follow? Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah, like I said, yesterday was a little bit of a train wreck. I could just tell while doing that, oh, this isn't working. This is not sticking. So I figured having a nice guide that you can easily reference would be a, gr would be a good way to uh, help things along. Now, I would be happy if you put 1 plus or minus 2 as your final answer on the worksheet. I would not yell at you, but I think that it, it's a bit better overall to 
simplify it if we can. Okay, so that was number one on the worksheet I'm assigning. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do another one. So that was number one. Number two looks kind of boring. Let's let's do number seven together. All right, will anyone yell at me if I move on to number one? No one's yelling? Great. A couple of you joined late. We're doing, we're looking at some example problems from a worksheet that I put up on Canvas. It's the latest thing I put up in the learning module. All right, let's go ahead and do number seven together. Okay, what, what's number seven? Number seven. Is m squared minus 12 m plus 26 equals zero. Okay. So once again, we'll just Once again, we'll just follow the steps. Now the first thing it, it wants us to do is to is to is to move all of our constants over to the right side. So so just take all of your numbers and gather them up on the right. That's a positive 26. So in order to move it to the right, I'll need to subtract 26 from both sides. I have a 26, so I'll take it away from both sides. So our equation will now look like this. All right, step two, find one half of B and add the square of that number to both sides. So what is half of negative 12? Help me out, what is half of negative 12? Six. Negative uh, six. Yeah, negative six. Okay. And then it wants us to add the square of that number to both sides. Well, negative six squared. What's negative six times negative six? Positive 36. 36. Exactly. So we're going to add a 36 to both sides. So now we have m squared minus 12m plus 36 equals negative 26 plus 36. Well, first of all, the right side is easy. Negative 26 plus 36. That's a... Um, 
Oh, I'm getting brain dead. That's uh, 10. Yeah. And now we'll factor this into a perfect square. That is, we're going to factor it into a thing times itself. So looking at our guide, what do you think is going to be in here? Let me see. There's going to be a room somewhere. So, looking at our handy dandy guide, well, let's see. One half of B is, well, we're basically just splitting it up, you know, factoring it like normal. 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8. 36 is negative 6 times negative 6, and neg because negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12. So we're going to split this up into x minus 6 times x minus 6. And this number, you know, the thing that you're adding or subtracting to sit, or the thing that you're adding, adding to the, oh, wait, it's not an x, it's an m. I lost my variable somewhere along the way. There we go. OK, anything times itself is that thing squared Now our next step is to find the square root of each side. So we're just going to square root both sides here. Square root of anything squared is that thing. The square root and the square cancel out. And on the right side, we have the square root of 10. Can this square root be simplified at all? Nope. Nah. 10 is 2 times 5, neither of which are perfect squares. So this can't be simplified any further. All right. Oh, but when it, but when we take the square root, we should need to remember that this is a plus or minus. Because a, a negative root 10 times a negative root 10 will give us 10. All right. Finally, add 6 to both sides. And we have that. And at this point, the worksheet is happy and calls it done. But if we want to get technical, then really this means is two different solutions. 6 plus the square root of 10 and 6 minus the square root of 10. All right. Did that make sense? Yep. So, did so do you think this guide do you think this guide helped everything come together? Make it make yeah. more sense. Good. Okay. So, now some let's see. Okay. I have about 15 minutes left in class. OK, so we still have about 15 minutes left in class. So I'm actually going to take this opportunity to do one more of these. Now, I think that in this worksheet, all of our answers will be purely real. This is a real number. That's a real number. So it's a real number. But this method can also get us 
This method can also get us a uh, get us solutions that are complex. So let's try an example of one with, of one with complex square roots. This is not from the worksheet. This is just one that I'm doing just to show just to show you how that just to sh show you an example of how that works. So can I erase number seven? Yeah. No one's yelling. Okay. Let's say we have, let's say we need to solve x squared plus 4x plus 25 equals 0. OK, so and again, this is not in the worksheet. So we'll follow the same steps as before. Move this over to the other side. So now we have x squared plus 4x equals a negative 25. Step two, find one half of B and add the square of that number to both sides. One half of B, or no, one half of B, well, half of four is two. And then we'll add the square of that to both sides. Two squared is four. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals negative 25 plus 4. Negative 25 plus 4 is negative 21. Now, on the left side, this is a perfect square trinomial. I can split this up into 2 and 2, 2 times 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So I can bubbleize this. I can factor it into x plus 2 times x plus 2. And anything times itself means we're squaring it. OK. So add it to both sides, factor into the bubbles. So left side squared. OK, now we need to find the square root of each side. The square root of anything squared is just that thing. But on the right side, now we have a negative square root. So I can split this up into the square root of 21 times negative 1, which is the same as the square root of 21 times the square root of negative 1. Uh, what do we call the square root of negative 1? What symbol do we use for that again? I. I. Now, technically, the square root of 21 could be positive or negative. So subtract 2 from both sides. And we have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 21i. Hey, look, it's a complex number, real plus imaginary, or also real minus imaginary. So our final solutions are negative 2 plus the square root of 21i 
and x equals negative 2 minus, whoa. The square root of 21i. All right. Does that make sense? So the, the, one of the things that's so cool about, about uh, completing the square like this is that you can, well, get complex solutions. This would be utterly impossible to do just by factoring it. But with completing the square, we can handle it. All right. So, at this at this point, I think that's given you everything you need to get started on this on the worksheet. Again, it's in the learning modules, so make sure that you log into that and download it and get to work. The assignment in Canvas can be turned in as either in the text box so you can type out your answers, or you can take a picture of your work and turn that in and get, upload that instead. You can do either one. Okay.